G'day everyone, welcome to this second um, second series of videos. Uh, this time we're going to be making a um, the Beavis Audio um, guitar buffer, uh, except we're going to be setting it up for fabrication this time instead of um, a self-etchable um, layout, uh, which has its, has its pros and cons. Um, there's probably a little bit more to do with a fabricator, um, a few, few more things that you, should, that you should set up um, when you send it off for fabrication. Um, than you need to do when you do a single uh, a single layer board. Um, but one of the big one of the big positives is well you don't have to etch it. You can just send it off to get it fabricated, and and a board of this size will be pretty cheap to get fabricated. Um, uh, as as I said in um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the last video that um, the, the fabrication costs are so cheap um, and easy that I'm finding I'm getting more things fabricated and designing my own effects more than actually. Um, uh, etching, um, uh, doing single single sided etches, um, I, something I find rewarding. Uh, hopefully you will too. Um, so um, we'll go. I'll break this video up into small parts as well, like I did with the last one, um, just so that's small digestible pieces that you can follow, um, depending on how long the um, video goes for. Now I actually lost the uh, layout from the last video. I accidentally deleted it. Um, so I've just set it up again. Um, you should pretty much have these components. You can just you can just delete all the traces that we did on the last one if you want to save you having to do it again. And then just just arrange your components something like this. Um, I've got them quite compact, um, which is one of the benefits of doing a fabricated board because you've got two layers to work on um, to put your tracks on this time. So hoping we should be able to um, to lay it out the way that I've got here. Might not be able to. We'll just have to see how we go. I might have to tweak a few things as we go along. Um, but basically just set them out the way that I've got them here, as I said, um, and we'll start um, and we'll start putting the, the traces down. Before we do that though, um, uh, we should um, change these these labels that we made in the last um, in the last uh, tutorial. Um, I'm actually firstly make them a bit smaller. I think I think four font for a um, fabricator board takes up a little bit too much room. Um, so I actually put mine, I think mine's on um, three uh, font size. Yeah, change it to three font size. Um, I actually made ground a little bit smaller as well, although, although there's enough room there to have the full word ground written, so it doesn't matter. Um, but the important thing here is actually to change the layer that they're on, because at the moment, if you get that fabricated, um, you won't, you, you these, these these labels won't come out because they're actually on the top assembly um, layer, um, which is not what you want. You actually want them on the silk screen layer so that the um, so that they're 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 printed onto the onto the PCB so people can follow. If if you're selling them or giving them away, people can follow uh, uh, how you've set up the um, the board. Otherwise, the board's going to come out and have no labels on these pads, and they're not going to know what they're for. So um, you want these labels to be on the silk screen layer, um, and and. Uh, just so you know, all, anything that's pretty much green on this um, on this layer will be printed on the silk screen layer. So <clears throat> when you get your boards back, um, these uh, the the capacitor with C2 and plus that will come that will be printed on the top of the um, on top of the board. And if you get your boards printed at uh, fabricated at um, OSH Park, they'll be printed um, on purple boards in white. Um, they'll come out. The silk screen will be um, will be white. I'll actually show you an example of a board that's been that's been fabricated, so you can see how it all um, fits together, and we can compare it to um, the the board the uh, the board that I designed in Dip Tray, so you can see how it comes out um, when it comes back from the fabricator. And I'll also be doing a video on how to send your your files to OSH Park to get them fabricated as well. So this is the complete process. By the end of it, you should be able to. Um, make your own uh, simple effects um, and send them off to get fabricated. Um, so uh, for me it's quite exciting doing this sort of stuff so I hope you're um, enthusiastic about it as well. So let's get into it. Now as I said we need to change these comments. Um, if you click on one up the top right corner you'll see um, it says type top assembly. Change that to top silk screen. So top means top of the board and silk screen means it's going to be silk screen on the top of the board. We could actually change that to bottom silk screen if we wanted to and it would be silk screen on the bottom of the board because the fabricator will silk screen the top and the bottom of your board. So you can put labels on the bottom of the board but generally you leave them on the top of the board. Um, so do that for all the four 
all the four labels, change them all to top silk screen. You can see they're changing to the green color, like I said before, um, that which means that they will be um, silk screened. Uh, okay, so so now we've got the labels um, to be silk screened on the board. We can see what what's going on when we get the boards back from the fabricator. So let's start tracing this out. Um, and we do it the same way that we did the last time. I'm not going to change the trace width this time because uh, I'm not etching it, so I don't care um, that if they're too small or or or, or too big. Um, so I'm just going to use the default um, trace um, width that um, that dip trace uh, does uh, automatically. And um, whoops, just grab the um, capacitor there. Um, and um, this will be um, this will be. I think it's 0.3 of a mil, 0.33 of a mil, which is fine. Uh, a millimeter, I should say, not mil. That's diff That's a different measure of unit. A millimeter, um, and as you can see, the the track just went over the silk screen. But the layers that come back from the fabricator are, you've got the the substrate, which is going to be the FR4 board, um, and then you've got the copper that goes over the top of that, and then you've got a solder mask which um, prevents the solder from um, from from like when you solder this pad in real life um, obviously uh, the solder won't travel down the track that's actually all going to be silk screen and I'll show you what I mean by that when I show you the real life board um, it might all click when I show you that um, so this in label is actually printed on top of the silk screen so the track is actually underneath a solder mask and then the silk screens on top of it so it's not going to be it's not the other way around the silk screens not below the track the silk screens on top of the track so it's all fine um, th this will work perfectly fine uh, you get used to thinking in in layers um, once you start um, de designing a few boards um, and that's fine we don't need to worry about that so we go from input to C1 again and then we're going to connect up um, well this um, this ground needs to actually go to um, R2. So um, the other side needs to go to um, R1 and R2. This is just how I usually think out loud um, when I'm doing this stuff. So I'm going to go like this, um, which should be should be fine. And then ground needs to go to R2 as well. So I'm just going to flip that around like that. You can see that I've had a bit of experience with this because I'm thinking out, I'm thinking logically how I'm going to route this stuff, and it's a skill that comes comes with time. You can actually you can actually use dip trays to automatically route um, these, but um, I found it's a bit sort of hit and miss, um, and you end up just having to reroute most of it anyway. But I suppose if you do this for the for a job, you probably know how to do it properly. But yeah, I don't, so um, I'm just going to do it manually. So I actually didn't even need to use um, the second layer. Um, to get that routed, um, it actually worked out fine. Although um, R1 actually uh, needs to go to nine volts, which is over the other side of the board, and there's absolutely no way that I can route that. Like if I want to do, I place down the, um, the, the the this is the shape, this is the size that I have in mind, and I'm, I'm going to put this down so you can see what we're dealing with. So like we did at the end of the last tutorial, we put the um, we put the board layout down. I'm just going to put it down now so you can see what I'm trying to achieve here and I don't think it's going to happen because there's actually absolutely no way whoops there's absolutely no way that I can get that 9 volts to go through that barrier of um, of pins on the, on the dip I'm just going to I'm just going to fix this up just give me one moment okay so anyway something like that so as you can see there's four there's four pins here um, and that's just like a brick wall. So I can't get over to the other side, whether it be on layer one or layer two, there's just no way I can route that over the other side where the plus nine volts is. So I'm gonna have to make the board a little bit bigger. Um, there's other ways to get around that. Um, I could make the pads on um, this, 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 um, this dip smaller and then route through the middle of them, um, which um, we won't do. I'll just keep it simple for this one um, and make it um, uh, quicker and quicker to follow. So I'm just going to make the board a bit bigger, uh, like so. Um, and like I said, I mean, we managed to do the single layer, the single layer etch on this um, without having to, without having to use a second layer. So I don't know if we're going to be saving a hell of a, a hell of a lot of room with this particular example, but it's just an example to show you um, um, how to do it anyway, more than anything else. If you do a more complicated layer, trust me, you'll be using that second layer a lot. 
um, but in this particular case we probably won't. So I'm just going to go around the outside of that and, um, uh, and then we connect um, R1, R2 and C1, um, which is this one, R, R1, R2, C1. Actually a tip, uh, a, a good tip is when you, when you hover over a pad, it actually highlights all the pads that are connected to that pad. So you can see that R2 and C, and C1 are all highlighted. So you know um, on a complicated board again, when you've got traces going all over the place, you can just highlight one of the pads and it will show you where, where the net is connected to, uh, the net of traces is connected to on all the other, on all the other components, um, which, is, which, is, which is very handy. Um, so let's connect, um, you can connect any one of these to um, pin three, <coughs> excuse me, pin three of the dip. So just go straight across like that. Now, I, I'm predicting that I'm gonna actually I'm going to actually get this done on one layer again. So I'm just going to pretend that I need to use layer two just so you can see how to do it yourself. So we're on layer one. If, to go to layer two, the quickest way is to hit uh, the number two on your keyboard. And you can see that now all that, um, all the components and the silk screen have been um, grayed out because they've been, uh, th that's layer, th pretend like you've just flipped the board over um, in front of you. So now we're looking at the bottom of the board. Um, and this is where the power of a two-layer um, layout um, comes comes uh, uh, comes into play. Um, so we're going to connect um, pin two and pin six together on the bottom side. I know, like I just said, we don't need to do it on layer two. I'm just showing you as a matter of example. Um, in fact, we'll do the rest of the board um, on layer two. Um, so pin two and pin six are connected together, and we've also got pin seven, which is connected to the um, plus nine volts. Um, so um, this is actually this is actually a good example of of, of uh, for you um, uh, as to why as as to what um, the two layer um, uh, setup can achieve. Um, so we've I've just connected that to plus nine volts. Now is that actually is that pad actually connected to nine volts and back over to R one? It is because. These holes, when you get them from um, a fabricator, are actually um, plated on the inside. So there is a connection that goes from this pin um, all the way through to the other pin uh, because it goes through the hole um, and and across the trace. Um, so 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 both both sides are connected together. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, again, I'll show you uh, a, a physical example once we finish um, setting this up. So. You, so you can see how all this stuff um, comes into play on a real life um, board. It helps to actually see the board um, to, to work it all out. But, but needless to say that this, um, this, this pad got, goes, goes along this trace up to this pad through the middle of the hole because it's plated and then onto the, the top side trace and then across to R1. So it's all connected together. Um, so that's um, that's pretty much it for the pins on the IC. Except for I think I'm think I think I'm missing one here. Um, pin five is not connected. Uh, pin four goes to ground, so we'll connect that to ground. Again, it's it's connected together. You can see there that when I highlight, like I was saying before, the um, pads go uh, um, will will all highlight red when they're connected to a net. You can see here that um, uh, even uh, R two. <coughs> Excuse me. Even R2 um, is connected as well, even though it's on the top side. Um, so that's um, that's pretty much it for those connections. We just got to connect C2, um, which is pin pin six, and then we go the, from the other side, the minus of um, C2, to the output. Um, so that's all connected. I think that's pretty much it. Just check it over if you're actually going to get this um, board fabricated. Just check it over, make sure everything's fine. I actually changed that um, C2 to a bigger um, that electrolytic capacitor to it. Pretty sure it's a bigger one than what we used originally. Um, don't worry too much about that. Um, the one that you're, you're using should be fine. Just make sure it's a similar a similar size um, to that one. Um, so that's all connected up. You've got the um, traces on both sides now, top and bottom. Like I said, the bottom wasn't even necessary for this board because it's so simple. I'm just showing you so that you know how to do it. And then you might want to put a label um, on, on the board to say that this is your board um, and that you made it. So um, my my web store is doityourselfguitarpedals.com.au. That's not going to fit. 
uh, anywhere on this board. So I'm just going to put the initials DGP as I sometimes do. Um, do it yourself guitar pedals that that's standing for. And actually just put it on um, at default. Put it on um, the top side, which is not what I want. Um, I actually want it on the bottom side. So I'm going to I'm going to do that again off the board because I can't grab it where I placed it um, just above. And then I'm going to make that, uh, actually I'm going to leave it nice and big because it looks pretty cool. And then we're going to change the layer um, from top from top assembly, not to top silk. I don't want it on the top, I actually want it on the bottom. So we're going to go bottom silk for that one. And then we're going to go layer 2 and we're going to put it on, um, on the board. And I just noticed it's grey, which is actually assembly, I picked the wrong one, bottom silk. So it goes blue when it's on the bottom, the bottom silk screen. Um, and you can put whatever you want on there, your website name or... Um, yeah, whatever you want. I usually put a version number, the name of the board, and my web store name, um, doitselfguitarpedals.com.au, um, on most of my on most of my um, boards on my web store. Um, and um, I think we're pretty much actually done. Um, believe it or not, I think we're actually we're actually done for this one. Um, the only